Hey guys, I'm Stella. I'm Bryce. I'm John. And this year, Earth Day is on April 22nd, and we want to show you guys some things we were doing for Earth Day and tell you guys some things you can do for Earth Day. One thing that I'm doing even more of is recycling. I drive less and bike more. And one thing that I do is use a reusable water bottle instead of using plastic ones. So this year for Earth Day, um, I got a couple of starter seed pots and uh, these guys are going to stay inside for nights and then they're going to come out during the day. Um, I got some basil, some chives, some parsley, some peppers, um, and I was hoping to get some blueberry, strawberry, and raspberry plants, but the place that I went to didn't have them yet. Um, so I'm going to go get those again in mid-June. Um, I feel like not only does it like help clear the air and everything, but it's also more sustainable than going to the grocery store and getting these things. And you can also grow your own specific things and you just hop outside and grab whatever you need and then keep regrowing it. It's kind of just constantly there. So every year we take up this little patch of grass in our yard and we put plants and vegetables and all kind of stuff that we use throughout the year. Yeah. So other things you guys can do for Earth Day are to carpool before or after school. You can conserve more water by taking short showers. You can pick up after your dog when you're on a walk. And stay, stay as sustainable as possible. As possible. <laughs> What's up, FHS? I'm Jimmy. And I'm Miles. Hope you're staying healthy, Sabres. This week, we'll take a peek at EAA's Young Eagles program. Cheyenne produced a Sabre spotlight on gymnast Peyton Harris. Miles talked to teacher athletes, and Tori challenged you to tell us you're from FHS without telling us you're from FHS. Jimmy has shared his love of flying with us in our moments of zen. We've seen the changing colors and the Chicago skyline. Are you interested in learning how to fly? EAA's Young Eagles program could be a good first step. Young Eagles is a program through the Experimental Aircraft Association that offers free airplane rides to youth ages 8 through 17. The joy of just getting up in the sky and being free, and that's what this promotes. It promotes getting more women into the flight system, just a whole host of ways getting kids introduced to general aviation. Signing up for a Young Eagles ride is quick and easy. There's a website called www.youngeaglesday.com or .org and you can go there and register for the next rally in your area. In addition to a free airplane ride, each Young Eagle receives an online ground school for their yeah. private pilot's license and an EAA student membership. The Young Eagles program would not be possible without the help of some very dedicated volunteer pilots. I showed up one time when Sam Johnson was here uh, he funded the Young Eagles from the beginning and he was the only pilot and there were like 35 kids. So I decided I would like to, uh, like to join him in doing that and I made a promise to him that I would keep Young Eagles going as long as I could. Young Eagles pilots are not compensated for their time or money spent flying Young Eagles. They volunteer to introduce the next generation of pilots to aviation. I know at least 10 or 12 of my Young Eagles have their pilot license now. It's pretty much just a way of sh sharing your passion for flying and enjoyment of flying with young people. Chapter 838 hosts their weather-dependent Young Eagles Rally every second Saturday of the month, March through November. Thanks, Jimmy, for the great story. Thanks, Miles. Back in the day, some of our teachers used to be quite the athletes. Like us, many played high school and even college sports and learned through those experiences. Let's take a look at all our teacher stars. Uh, my name is Jordan Hine. I'm proud to serve as the Athletics and Activities Director here. And uh, I played uh, football and I also uh, wrestled in college for the University of Wisconsin. Go Badgers. Uh, at the next level in college was um, just the challenge, you know, and, and um, competing every day and um, taking that next step at a, at a Big Ten school um, was a, a great challenge for me. And um, competing in both sports um, simultaneously was Obviously an amazing experience, um, led to a lot of uh, skills and habits that I still carry today. So um, ultimately it was the challenge to compete every day that, that drove me there. I'm Pat Gain and um, I went to West Dallas Central High School. I competed in 
track, cross country, and of course basketball. And then I was fortunate enough to be able to play basketball and high jump at Carthage College, NCAA Division III. The biggest lesson that I learned was in high school, I was kind of a go-to guy for basketball. I was the leading scorer on the team. They made plays around me, and when I got to college, I was a role player. So I gave a guy who needed a rest a rest for a few minutes, and he went back in. So when I became a coach later on, it really helped me understand both sides of it from my role players, my bench players, to my starters and, and the people we leaned on heavily. So it made me a better coach and honestly a better person and teacher in the end. Hey, I'm Mr. Wassmiller. Uh, I went to Muskego High School and um, played football for two years and then played all four years of baseball. Um, so one of the lessons that I learned a lot from sports is just leadership and using my voice, learning to communicate, learning to be a good teammate, and learning what it takes to be someone that uh, people want to go to to talk. Um, I'm Mr. Brian Karolevich. I'm an associate principal here at Franklin High School. Um, I did go to high school at Warren Township High School in Gurney, Illinois, where I played one year of basketball, three years of golf, and four years of baseball. I think the biggest thing I carried with me is the idea of a team. Even in the classroom when I was a teacher, I would talk about the class as a we, even if I was talking to individuals, and I always felt really strongly that everyone has a role, and in, in order to perform as a collective at a high level, everybody needs to do that role to the best of their ability. So. Um, I think that's a pretty important lesson, not only in sports, but in life. No one does it alone. The lessons of leadership and collaboration that you learn from sports and other school activities prepare us for college and the world of work as much as our time in the classroom does. Our Cyber Spotlight highlights students who do something special outside of school. FHS junior Peyton Harris is an award-winning gymnast who is going to a D1 school to compete. My name is Peyton Harris. I started gymnastics when I was three years old in a mom and me class and I really enjoyed it. I started competition when I was about five or six years old and I've been doing it ever since. We practice six days a week and then Monday through Friday is two to six and then Saturdays I actually teach my own classes so I'm here from nine to one o'clock. Since we spend so much time in the gym perfecting routines and just skills, it's really fun to just go out there and just show off what you've been working on. I actually just committed to Ohio State University on a full ride and I'm really excited. So I plan to further my gymnastics career at Ohio State. So I'm really excited for that. I've coached Peyton since she was about 10 years old. So she's gonna be turning 17, so close to seven years. Going into college, my advice for Peyton is to trust her future coaches, okay? She's had trust in me for a long time and her other coaches here but it's gonna be a whole new field going into college. She's super talented. I don't have to teach her much, I just kinda of have to manage her. So on to the next coaches is what I say. So she's, I just wish her luck and she's gonna be amazing. We can't wait to watch your journey as you compete at Ohio State University. Congrats. FHS is unique in many ways. Let's see what students have come up with for our TikTok Saber Roar Challenge. What's up FHS? We got another challenge for you. Tell me you're an FHS student without telling me you're an FHS student. I'm gonna sprint to my car at the end of the day so I can beat the buses. So you're not stuck in the parking lot for 35 minutes. Beat the buses. Um, having a last week of senior freedom. Oh wait, just kidding, don't know what that is. When kids in the parking lot cut you off and blast their music because they think they're really cool, so you honk your horn at them because they don't know how to use the, the every other car system. Oh, and those two juniors who scored in my car with the water gun. You know who you are. I have 60 students in my Spanish class. And I switched classrooms. Nobody knows how to wear their mask right. This is my imitation of everybody at FHS. I would say just to look at the fish pond, just for like 10 minutes or something, you know, just spend some time there. Hey, hey, hey! <laughs> There's horrible Wi-Fi anywhere you go. Half the school is a tundra, the other half is a sauna. Go Sabres! <laughs> you know you're an FHS student when the announcements are 15 minutes long. Go block? What is that? Oh, uh, you gotta keep up that Uno streak. <laughs> Having a senior trying to describe where they park is horrible. Hey Siri, how do you use a roundabout? I crashed in the roundabout. I'm that kid that ended up in the roundabout. I got that nice snowbank lift cape, my friends. How do you use a roundabout? When did Mr. Kurlikowski become a student at FHS? Anyway, those were some great responses. 
Thank you to everyone that participated in our booth. Our kindness quote for today is, kindness has more power than compulsion. Thank you to Kylie Seacatch for the amazing artwork. That's all the time we have for today, Sabres. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Twitter at the Saber Roar to stay up to date with all things Saber Roar. We'll see you next week, Sabres.